they talk about finding gold in the hills of California. I found a gold mine maybe eight miles from my house. When you're a car guy, you think about cars differently. You almost think about them like people. And you want to save cars. I got one of the best phone calls a few years ago from a friend of mine who's also a car guy. His wife has a business to clear out houses when they're sold so that real estate people can sell them. So whenever there's a car involved, he looks around and he was calling me. He's all like, I need some help. This house has some cars. I'm like, great, I'm always glad to help. What he was asking for was help moving them out of the house. And I'm like, sure, what's, what's going on? And this was 2017, which was the year of the storms in California when we actually had rain. And after all that passed, this home was gonna be for sale in the Santa Cruz Mountains. And it's always amazing when things are close to your home that you had no idea about. He's like, there's a house up here. They're going to clear it out. It was a gentleman who was going to be put in a home. He had dementia. And I think his nieces, was his two nieces, were going to sell the house to help pay for all that. And they wanted to clear it out. And I guess they had originally had called, like, pick your part to come take the cars away. This is before my friend and his wife got there to kind of get in and see what was going on. And pick your part couldn't get up there in their truck. The, the, one of the roads was washed away. You couldn't even get up there with a regular trailer, like a regular with trailer. Fortunately, my tra I have a trailer that I bought off of a Bonneville guy that he built for his Bonneville car, which was about two feet narrower than a standard car trailer. And I'm like, I can get up there. He's like, great. He goes, I need you to pull out these six, well, at the time we thought five cars. We found another one. So I show up. I, I'm at Canopy at the time, so my idea was to drive up at lunch. I pick up a car every day and help empty out this house. It's because I'm thinking, oh, pick your part, was coming to get them, it's a junkyard, I'm doing a friend a favor, we'll winch these cars out and, and help them out. So I go up to get the first car, and we come to the top of the property, and it is a one lane road, like mountain road with redwood trees on either side, where you're going around the redwood trees, up into the Santa Cruz Mountains, and there are some sections where you can barely make the turn with the trailer, get up to the top, and there's the house, and the driveway goes straight down. And it's a driveway covered in pine needles and leaves. That looks like nothing has driven down this, this driveway in 20 years. Walk down, sliding, slip sliding down this hillside. And it goes all the way down, it curves, and it comes over to where the cars are. The curve is like a cliff that had washed away in the storms. And then the house and a couple of sheds. On the corner of the curve is a car and it's a 911T, and it's on jack stands. One of the jack stands is missing because it had been washed away, and it is tilted off the hill like this. Now, my friend knows I'm into Porsches. He starts laughing because he's realized, like, it was a joke, and this was just the beginning of it. So a 911, it was a 71 911T in white, almost sliding off a hill. We go around the shed, and there's the additional cars, all under torn covers. Pull one back, it's an E36 M3. The next one, pull it back, it's a Porsche 944 Turbo in red. We pull another car, it's a 66 Mustang Coupe that is in primer that obviously was a track day car and had all the suspension done and a 302 in it. It was pretty cool. Already, like, wow. The last cover comes off, and it, he had played me beautifully because the last cover was what you wanted to pull off the last cover. It's a 1969 Porsche 911S, which to me is a holy grail car. He's now giggling, and I'm like, and what are we doing with these cars? He's like, well, we're gonna get them out of here and we're gonna sell them one by one. We open up the shed, and it's like some kind of archaeological dig where one layer of a city is under the next layer, and there's layers of cars. Like, there's the 911, there's all the stuff for the Mustang, there's all, everything that was missing from the cars was layered inside. Every time we turned a corner, I'm like, this is amazing. We go into the house. Now, the house, you needed a hazmat suit to go in. The 
owner had torn out all the carpets down the plywood because apparently he had 11 cats and they had done their business inside and the whole house was like horrible. But he had an entire library of car books. Like he was a car guy, obviously from the choices of cars that he had, but he had a full Porsche library. They talk about finding gold in the hills of California. I found a gold mine maybe eight miles from my house. And Steve, my friend's like, just like, so what do you want to do? I'm like, what do you think I want to do? Like how much for all the cars? Like just, I will buy all of them so I can get that 911S. And none of the cars are in good shape. So he's like, well, I'll talk to the Denise's about it. So they go from pick and pull is going to give them 250 bucks a car or whatever, however that deal works to, well, how much is it worth? And unfortunately, somebody else I heard had found out about this and I had a feeling there was going to be some kind of bidding war on it. Now that everything has been uncovered and Steve, and Steve had brought a friend down there to help him, who I'm sure was another car guy, who I'm sure told other car guys. And you know how that just spreads through the community so quickly nowadays. So I was like, how much money can I scrape together? Because they're going to want cash and uh, nobody's going to finance a clutch of old crappy cars. I put together the money and I buy the cars. And then the process begins of removing them from the property. So I had to dig out the entire driveway from the top to bottom, leaf blower, shovels, everything, just to get a truck down there. We get all five cars in, and I also in the deal got the entire library and all the contents of both the sheds. So I go through the shed, the 911S had Weber's on it. I go in the shed and everything's labeled. There's a bag inside a box labeled 911S fuel injection, all of it. Now the pump alone is worth thousands of dollars. Like to find a complete 69 setup is almost impossible. Just sitting in a box. He had center lines on it because it was his track day, like a uh, autocross car. Go in there, 911 wheels, and there's all the Fuchs just sitting right there. Like it was amazing. Some of it was in the house. We had to dig through everything. But amazing, we found all the parts, the original seats, because he had a racing seat in there. We found the original seats. It was a gold mine. I get everything home, and my wife's a saint. Like, I bring home five cars, and this is my house in the Santa Cruz Mountains, which doesn't have a whole lot of space. Plus, I already have projects going on. And I'm lining our little driveway with derelict cars. And I get a call, like, a couple days later from Steve, and he's like, oh, there's a sixth car. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. The, the, the hillside goes down. It was about a few acres of this Santa Cruz hillside. And apparently there was a road that went to the bottom. At the bottom is a Fiat 124 Sport Coupe, which are pretty cool. Like, I was like, that's a pretty cool little car. I looked it up online because I don't remember ever seeing one. I'm like, that's a pretty cool car. We get down there. It's sitting on his belly pan in dirt. It is almost a car, not quite a car. But apparently I had bought that as well. So I scrape that out. I get the cars home and the idea is I'm gonna go and sell each of the cars and end up with the 911S at the end. And it worked out pretty well. So now all the other cars are gone. And kind of beautifully, they all sold for enough money to pay off what I had paid for all the cars. So the 911S, is the profit. And if you know what a 69 911S is worth, it's pretty tidy. I've never been a huge fan of 911s. Like it's a, it's before my time, the early 911s, but when you drive them, they're so sublime. And it's not in great shape, but it was numbers matching, engine and transmission, which is huge. All the original parts were there. Um, it's in a special order color. I found all the records. I had to dig through all of his really gross books. So I have to make a decision on What's the path? What do you do with it? And to do a ground up restoration on 911 takes a long time and a lot of money. And I didn't want to sink, I, I wanted to drive it. I've done restorations that went too far. So I was gonna do a mechanical restoration of the entire car, tear it down almost to the tub and then put it back together again, but leave the paint. The paint was fine. Uh, it was canary yellow and the body was in pretty good shape. So piece by piece I start taking it apart. And at that point, we moved house, which of course stops any project in its tracks. I got incredibly lucky because the 911 
engine guy I was going to take the engine to and transmission to, Tom Amen, former 935 racer, 911 air cool mechanic, genius, had just moved from down in the Bay Area where I previously lived to within five miles of my new house in Grass Valley. So I took the engine over to him, and this is when all the COVID stuff started happening, and I'm like, just take the engine and transmission, rebuild those, do it the way you do it, and he has all the little tricks. So he does that, mechanic Matt and I do the rest of the car, suspension, the wheels, everything, and it, oh, it came together beautifully. Every part of it, I, I went and spent the money on real Porsche parts and real Porsche everything, because it will make it just right. Because you don't skimp on this kind of car. And everything that went into it, we did everything, everything went perfect. I was like, I got it, I got it. It's the 911S, and essentially I got it for free, because the car's paid for it. And I took it for a drive, and I'm like, this is, this is awesome. I mean, really the next step was get it registered and start driving it. That was only a few months ago. About the time where I'm thinking about what the next step with it is, I get a phone call from Mr. Ed Bolian. Now, he's called me before, and I ended up buying an Audi Quattro Cannonball car. This call was a little different. He's like, I found a car that you need to buy, although it's probably not a car you want to buy. And I'm like, where are we going with this? Ed is the expert in Lamborghini Murcielagos. This car was possibly the cheapest one. If Ed has anything to do with it, it's probably the cheapest one in existence. He found a 2006 Murcielago Roadster, manual transmission. And I'm sitting there going, how much is it? And he tells me, about the price range, and it's exactly what the 911S is worth. And it hurts. It's painful, because what do you do? The 911S is a dream car, but it's not my dream. I'm not a 911 guy. The Mercilago is a dream car, but I'm not a supercar guy. So what do I do? I have to think logically, which is not easy for a car guy. The 911S has made its ascent. They have gained all the value they're going to gain. They'll continue a small rise. The Mercilago is just beginning its rise. So as an investment thing, as, a, as, as capital, I had to make a decision and buy a Mercilago. And I had to do it quickly. That's another story. But to do it quickly, I had to sell the 911S. So I put it online at a few different places, and, and it should sell itself. And it was, I just kind of put it right in the range where the Lambo was, not too expensive. I wasn't trying to ask huge prices for it. And I got a little bit of interest and it went to the perfect buyer. Like sometimes you find that perfect buyer. This, this was it. She came out from LA, she's a Porsche person. She loved the car, she brought a friend. And I'm like, great, are you gonna put it on a, a trailer and, and take it home? She's like, no, I'm gonna drive it. Excuse me? Like I've put maybe 150 miles on it so far and it's a fresh restoration and it is clean and it was raining out. And I'm like, you're gonna do what with my car? And like, I'm gonna drive it to LA. I'm like, so I gave her all the caveats. I'm like, you know, this is what we have to look for. Cars are being broken in. But when you get there, you gotta change the oil immediately. And she's like, oh, it's great. Like she was fantastic. And she brought a friend of hers who's a car expert and uh, he gave his blessing. So they, they hopped in the car and they drove out my driveway. And that is how you turn a 911S into a Lamborghini for free. Premier Financial Services makes it easier and more affordable than you could possibly imagine to own your dream car. Their simple lease is one of the most powerful tools in the world of exotic car financing. You get all the benefits like the tax savings and the low payments of a lease with all the additional benefits that you'd normally find in a traditional finance arrangement. You can build up equity, you can pay it off early, you can trade in and out of cars because you get a very clear and easy to understand amortization table to understand what your payoff will be any month throughout your term. And all the while, the amazing team from Premier Financial Services will 
will be right there to help you along the way. They've been supporters of the VinWiki channel now for five years in a row, so we can't thank them enough for that, but mostly we're thankful for the fact that they can help you make it easier than ever to own your dream car. Check them out now.